So there's a children's song called, If You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands. But what I'd like to say is that most people don't claim to be happy today because the very next person near them might just say, sure you are, and interfere with it. But what I feel is that people do not regard bloodlines to a point, but at the same time that bloodlines of our human relationships and our family of origin do not regard law lines. You see, someone who is a part of your family of origin might think that they have the right to do all sorts of things to you without your lawful consent that can humiliate you and turn your life into abuse networks. And at the same time, because you're not thinking about how America really works in the shadow world or in the hood that is in the area of impoverishment without any good, you don't recognize the play you just put your partner your lover, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your aunt, your grandma, your grandfather, your mom, your dad in. And sometimes it might just be a friend or some sort of distant kin. But what I'm saying to you today is if you are choosing to break the law, you don't get to clap your hands. Because when you clap your hands, in my case, my birds know I've got food for them. My feathered friends, those marvelous geese that like to sit down with me in peace but what i do do for them is supplement their diet which is in great struggle because there's so many of them but what i'm also amazed at is if i call out for my little guy george who used to have a marvelous white mohawk so i could really tell who he was he and his buddy fred come right up to me and like okay we're here what do you want and then i know that my proper family is here otherwise they all look the same in their faces now, when we're in Japan, many Japanese do look the same because of the angle of the brow, because of the round or ovalness of their face, and openly they're Japanese. But what's amazing to me after having lived there for so long and worked there as an employee of companies is that when you're in the streets, not only can Japanese tell, but you can tell who is mainly Japanese versus who is a foreigner who's there as well to work or maybe someone who came over to work and then ended up marrying some sort of Japanese and then we could just joke and, t and tattletale time of a jerk. But the reality is that's not true. You see, it is true, but it isn't true. It is true that I can generally tell who is Japanese and who is Korean and who is Chinese and who now might be Mongolian or I really did a pretty good job in college of knowing who was Thai because we had quite a lot of them around her dormitories and in my life in Japanese classes, but openly I can also tell that by listening to the languages. Now I'm not as good with the rest of the world, I certainly recognize some aspect of Farsi, but that doesn't mean I know all the millions of dialects, and I'm over-exaggerating, of India. But what I can say today is that we have a right to study other languages in America, which is good for us. But if our language studies is not also teaching culture, we could be burying us. What I also know is that there is going to be some communicators who are teachers of a foreign language like Japanese, or perhaps like Farsi, that are not going to teach you everything you need to know to survive, to thrive in those cultures or in those countries. It's one of the reasons that I went out of my way to spend literally thousands of dollars of my hard-earned dollars to purchase an entire library of Japanese books. And the minute that I recognized something directly from Japan on a half price books bookstore, I might have bought it. But generally speaking, every motherfucking book in my library that I care about came from hard work and many unique travels that cost me several hundred dollars for my three-person family to travel back and forth from our cities down to Tokyo where the bookstore of Kinikunuya was. So any book of mine that has yen on the back is something that I took incredible time, incredible expense to go buy, not to mention the cost of the exchange rate that had me buy them. My Japanese wife would often roll her eyes at me of what I would spend on them on my credit cards, which did work for me overseas, and my bank card there, but she also knew that anything she wanted, I could get for her or for me. But when it came for clothing overseas, I rarely bought anything. I did buy a happy coat for me. I did do that for me. 
she did gift me some men's uh, festival wear, which I should, should still have somewhere. I did, when I was on my travel to, be, to visit my buddy Ed Graves, pick up a samurai underwear kimono that I hope is still with me. But there are people in police departments and sheriff uh, security departments and actually people who run those storage unit places that will open a lock on a storage unit just to poke around. And they steal things right off the ground. And every time I went back into my storage unit, somebody had obviously been in there poking around, interfering with my organization, and nosily there. And I'd find things that had gone missing back in my storage unit, especially private research for a project I once did, and I was motherfucking pissed. And even in my home when I finally moved into one, I had the same problem. I'd be looking through a box or a, I usually use a, some sort of a Rubbermaid tote or trunk, which I think I actually sent back at one time with my wife because they were the best things and really hard to find again. They were marvelous because they were set up perfectly for traveling on airplanes and they made perfect size to the airplane requirements of what you could travel and pay for in not only regular baggage but extra that you needed to take back and forth. But what I'm saying to you is that somebody kept entering my ba my property in the storage unit, which was supposed to be totally secure. And there's supposed to be security cameras on the aisle, but whatnot. But how many years do they keep those tapes? And how often, if you said, please access the security camera located near to this storage unit so I can find out what's happening to me, how accurate are those cameras and how efficient are the technology to connect to the operative electronics that might be in a door or just might be on the aisle. So when we're talking about putting our things away in a way that allows us to travel and not have to worry about things, we still have to worry about things. Because people have not learned God's laws, which says, Thou shall not steal. And people have not learned America's laws that says the same thing without any appeal. That in truth, the Fourth Amendment allows us the property and our paperwork and our possessions, but what I find amazing is there's a lot of websites that aren't articulating it the way it is noted in those original documents anymore. It's like people of America want to change our fundamental history and heritage, and people from other countries want to debase our statues and our reminders of the wars we have fought, the people, the many people and Americans who've died to protect our land, to fight for not to ending slavery and other things. We can't do that. You see, those monuments, those statues, the American flag, everything is a part of our past and everything is foundation for the future.